Hello everyone. This is Tughluq Abdurazak. The topic of my presentation today is East Turkestan has never been a part of China based on historical facts. So, where is East Turkestan and who are Uyghurs? East Turkestan is a Central Asian country which has been occupied by China since 1949. With a vast territory, it covers an area of 1.8 million square kilometers, equal to 695,000 square miles. That is, which is more than three times the size of France and seven times that of the United Kingdom. It was the center of ancient Silk Road and played a big role in connecting the East and the West in history. It shares borders with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan from the West, Pakistan and India in the South, Russia and Mongolia on the North, and China and Tibet on the East. East Turkestan's inhabitants are mainly Uyghurs and Central Asian ethnic groups such as Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Uzbek, Mongol, Tajik, and others. Uyghurs consist of the majority of East Turkestan population and have a rich history, lasted for more than 5,000 years. Other than Han people who immigrated to East Turkestan after 1949, nearly all inhabitants of East Turkestan speak variety of dialects of Turkic language. Several different sources estimated that there are 20 to 35 million Uyghurs live in East Turkestan. Most of the Uyghurs outside of East Turkestan settled in Central Asian countries and Turkey. My estimate is around 1.5 million. There are also unspecific number of Uyghurs live in Europe Australia, Japan, and America. My estimate is between 25 to 30,000. East Turkestan has a huge amount of natural resources, such as oil, natural gas, coal, gold, uranium, and a large area of grasslands and forests. It is one of the most beautiful land masses on Earth, with splendid deserts, fantastic mountains, and evergreen trees. Agricultural products are mainly wheat, cotton, fruits, and vegetables. Animal husbandry is also well developed. The area is sparsely populated with Chinese immigrants concentrated in big cities and locals spread all over the territory. Culturally, Linguistically, geographically, ethnically, genetically, and religiously speaking, the people of East Turkestan as a whole is completely different from the Han Chinese, who consists of 95% of China's population of 1.4 billion. In this century alone, the people of East Turkestan established two independent states. First, East Turkestan Islamic Republic in 1933, and second, East Turkestan Republic from 1944 to 1949. East Turkestan is under Chinese occupation. East Turkestan was occupied by Chinese communists in 1949 by cooperating with Chinese nationalists before escaping to Taiwan gained help from ex-Soviet communist regime after the World War II. Chinese people consisted less than 5% of the total population of East Turkestan at the time of occupation, and the percentages increased to more than 50% now as the consequence of enforced Han migration in massive scale. As I speak now, China has locked up 2 to 3 million or 12 to 15% Uyghurs in the Nazi-style concentration camps 
to indoctrinate them to become Han Chinese. This fact alone is an acknowledgement from China's communist regime that East Turkestan has not been a part of China yet. China is desperate in keeping its new territory under its continued occupation. It has committed the worst genocide act of the 21st century. Let's have a glance of Chinese dynasties. Over the course of 4,100 years of Chinese history, starting from 2070 BC to 2019 AD, China has only effectively ruled East Turkestan for around 200 years. This is a well-known historical fact to the Western civilized world, as well as genuine Chinese historians. As some of you may aware, Chinese history is generally classified into 14 dynasties. That is, Xia, Shang, Zhou, Qin, Han. Six dynasties, Sui, Kang, five dynasties, Liao, Song, Mongol, Ming, Qin. Among these, only three dynasties, i.e. Han, Tang, and Manchu dynasties had created some limited influence in East Turkestan, while Mongol Empire played a significant role in strengthening Uyghur power in the region. By this presentation, my intention is to show that Han, Tang, Mongol, and Manchu empires were established and ruled by northern nomadic non-Chinese people who had a very weak connection with Chinese. Han, the majority population of uh, current People's Republic of China. Hence, Chinese government's repeated claims that East Turkestan has been historically part of China is a completely nonsense lie. Most of the maps shown here were taken from the book named Complete History of the World, published in 2004. The book is considered one of the most authoritative works on world history available today. The book cover is shown on the right. Now, let's look at the Han Dynasty. Han Dynasty started from 206 BC to 220 AD for 426 years. Han Dynasty was known for the Silk Road trade that connected Far East to Central Asia and Europe, a bureaucratic system in which promotion was based on merit, was established, and Confucianism was adopted by the state for national governance. Agriculture, handicrafts, and commerce developed rapidly. During the reign of Emperor Han Wudi, the Han regime prospered the most. The multi-ethnic country became united during the Han regime and helped with the expansion of Han Empire. The Han dynasty is deemed one of the most powerful and important dynasties in China's history by China's historians. Han is still considered superior to any other nationalities within current People's Republic of China ruled by communist regime. Main event of uh, Han Dynasty are Great Wall of Han was built to protect foreign, i.e. the Hon's raid. Qin Shi Huang was crowned as the first emperor of Han in 221 BC. Zhang Qian's envoy traveled to Central Asia for negotiation from 138 to 126 BC. Protectorate of Central Asia was administered from 59 BC to AD 23. By the way, this is the only period that Han had some influence in Central Asia. Population reached 57 million, became an empire as powerful as Roman Empire. Han collapsed in 220 AD 
as the result of yellow turban and other rebellions. Han was divided to three kingdoms, Wei, Shu, and Wu. By the way, Wei was uh, established by northern Mongolian tribes. Now let's look at the Han uh, territory. The territory of Han, the territory of Han Empire was restricted to the south of Great Wall and the east of the Tibetan Empire. Although East Turkestan was temporarily garrisoned by military force of Han, the political influence was basically none, other than a brief period of military cooperation with rulers of Turkestan region. There were no population transfer or cultural exchange at all. Besides, after the death of Han Wudi, Han Empire started collapsing and Turkestan stayed complete independence until Tang invasion in 645. By the way, Zhang Qian's visit to Turkestan in the second century was a diplomatic trip for negotiating alliance against Hans and was regarded as a failed trip because he basically achieved nothing. This is a map from Chinese source. It clearly marked that East Turkestan as countries in the West. Numerous Chinese history books describe the area as foreign land by giving different names, as you can see in the map. Here are two interesting uh, arts. Two Central Asians shown in, the, in this famous Chinese art indicated there were foreigners different, different than that uh, Han people. There are long leather coats and hats, and even the way they stand is very similar to the local East Turkestan people today. You can basically see them in Nowadays, Kashgar, Khotan, Hulja, or Urumqi. The porcelain on the left, by the way, was a foreign Silk Road merchant with a camel carrying loads of goods from the West. He was one of the typical Central Asian traders during Tang period. Here is a, country, here is a comparison map of the territory of Han Empire in blue color. Uh, that's called the Golden Age of Chinese history, to the current map of uh, People's Republic of China, including the occupied East Turkestan. From the overlapped map, as you can see, Han Empire from 206 BC to 220 AD has nothing to do with East Turkestan. Now, let's look at the Tang Dynasty, which started from 618 to 907 AC, and lasts for 289 years. The powerful and prosperous Tang Dynasty was established after the short-lived Sui Dynasty in 618. In the middle of the Tang Dynasty, an immense rebellion by Turks occurred in the West and the North, and the situation continued to the end of Tang Dynasty in 907. Tang Dynasty split to five dynasties and ten kingdoms. This ended when one of the northern kingdoms defeated its neighbors and established the Song Dynasty. Main event of the Tang Dynasty are establishment of the Tang Empire in 618. Tang armies invaded Harm Basin and Jungaria from 645 to 750. This is a time when Tang Dynasty had some influence in Tarim and Jungaria Basin. Yan Dynasty was established by Alu Shan, who in Chinese is An Shan Rebellion, uh, from 755 to 763. Tang lost control of East Turkestan and Central Asia after the famous Talas War in 751. Uyghur Empire ruled the north of the Great Wall from 745 to 840.
Here is a map of territory of uh, Tang administration uh, in 7th and 8th century, uh, which covered Tunhuang from the west, Yellow River from the north, Tibet from the southwest, uh, the region uh, covered within pink col color line. Uyghur Turks controlled nowadays Mongolian territory from 745 to 840 until Kyrgyz tribes took over. Uyghurs were forced to migrate to East Turkestan and establish the powerful Idhot Kingdom. During the Alushan Rebellion in 755, Tang relied on Uyghurs to gain control of the collapse of Tang rule. From 645 to 750, Tang military, with help from Uyghurs, temporarily occupied Tarim Basin, Dungaria, Fergana, and Turkestan. However, Chinese cultural influence was very limited. Frequent rebellions took place during the entire period. After 750, Tang troops completely withdrew withdraw from Central Asia and Tang split to 10 kingdoms. Here's a big map of the, uh, during that period. As you can see on the top, it marked as a Turkestan, uh, and also marked as Uyghurs, which stands for the Uyghur uh, Empire. Then you have a Kidan, the Liao Empire in the north. On the west, you have Saudiana, Hawarism, uh, Fergana and some other smaller countries. And uh, as you can see on the top uh, left hand corner, you have Western Turks. Those area and the East Turkestan area, as well as uh, nowadays uh, Central Asian Turk re republics, they are all located in Central Asia. As I mentioned earlier, Tarim Basin and Jungaria were temporarily controlled by Tang and the Mongol Turk uh, military force from mid 7th to mid uh, 8th century. The Western Turkestan, Fergana and Sogdiana, were briefly under military, military control by Tang. However, the region quickly freed itself from Tang due to the strong Islamic influence from the West. Tang had a big loss in Talas River War. Culturally, Turkestan region kept total independence from Chinese influence. In 910, Tang Empire completely fell and split to 10 warring states before the establishment of the Song Dynasty. These are the names of the 10 states. These 10 states had no any connections to East Turkestan neither militarily, culturally, nor politically. They're completely separate. After the collapse of Tang and the end of, uh, at the end of the uh, 9th century, as the result of uh, wars uh, with Kidan and Western Turks, Shisha, China went into a warring states period. Eventually, Song Dynasty uh, was established and was able to control the South China. As shown on the right, Song Dynasty started from 960 and lasted until 1279 without any influence in East, East Turkestan for 300 years. Here is a picture of uh, General Alushan. The Alushan Rebellion was a devastating rebellion against the Tang Dynasty of China. The rebellion overtly began in December 755, when General Alushan, he's a descendant of Turk and Saudi, by the way, declared of himself emperor of Northern China, thus establishing a rival Yan dynasty, and ended when Yan fell in February 763, although the effect lasted more than this. The event is also known especially in Chinese historiography, as the Anshu Rebellion or Anshu Disturbances, as it continued after Alushan was killed by his son, Achin Shu, 
and his successor Shisimi, or as the result of uh, what's called Tianbo Rebellion. During that period, Sogdian merchants traveling between Tang and Central Asia, very few Chinese, if any, had settled along the Silk Road region. The ones who settled there eventually assimilated to Central Asian society. There are two pictures here. Let's take a look at these two pieces of art. The one on top is a picture of a Tang army, and mostly Turks was ancestors of Mongols who were masters in riding horses and using bows, as those were essential uh, in ancient wars. While Chinese or Han Chinese mostly lived along the Yangtze River and the Yellow River, they were very weak in uh, riding horses and very weak in fighting the wars. Bottom right are Tang musicians, mostly consisted of Central Asian Sogdians or uh, Turks. These are some of the examples of ancient arts. Uh, starting from the top, the first one uh, was excavated uh, from Turpan, the second one was excavated from the uh, Uzbekistan, third one from Turpan as well. I believe it belonged to the Idhukut Empire. And the bottom left uh, is uh, from the Fargana Valley that uh, shows an Uzbek boy uh, playing a music instrument, very similar to what Uyghurs are playing now. And the bottom right is a tomb of the ancient Turks. That's all for today. I'll continue on to Mongol Empire and the Manchu Empire next time. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Tuğluk Abdurazak. This is the second part of my presentation titled East Turkestan has never been part of China. Let's get continued. Mongol Empire was established in 1206 and lasted until 1368 for 162 years. Mongol dynasty in 1206, Chinggis Khan unified all the tribes, mainly ancestors of Mongol or Uyghur Turk tribes, in Mongolian steppes, founded the Mongol Khanate, and conquered an unprecedented swath of Asia. At the end of the 12th century, Mongolian rule grew steadily, with Chinggis Khan and his descendants expanding their territory. The Mongol Empire expanded all the way to Eastern Europe. The part of the Mongolian Khanate that ruled China was known as the Yuan Dynasty, lasted from 1279 to 1368. From 1271 to 1279, his grandson, Kublai Khan, finally conquered the Song Dynasty and founded the Yuan dynasty. He made Dadu, the modern-day Beijing, the capital of the first foreign-led dynasty in China. Trade, technological development, and connection between Far East and the Western countries continued under Mongol rule. For example, Marco Polo from Venice traveled extensively in Mongol Empire and later described Eastern culture and marvels in his book named Travels. By the way, based on some Uyghur and Turk uh, historians' view, the correct name for Mongol Empire should be Mongol Uyghur Empire because both were the ruling classes. However, the current Uyghurs are different than their ancestors. This uh, is uh, the territory of uh, Mongol Empire. The big event of the Mongol Empire are 
Genghis Khan, born as a Temujin. In 1206, he was crowned as the Khan of all peoples in the Yurts. Mongol conquest of Qin Empire from 1211 to 1234. Mongols and Uyghurs conquered all Central Asia, Karakitai and the Khwarezm empires from 1219 to 1221. Mongol Empire split to four Khanates, Great Khan, Chagatai Khan, Golden Horde, and Ilkhan in 1227. The Mongol conquerors were in close contact with three religions, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. Mongol armies invaded Moscow in 1237. Poland and Hungary in 1241, destroyed Baghdad in 1258. Uyghur script was adopted as official script. Uyghurs hired as higher level officials in Mongol court. Large portion of the Mongol army consisted of Uyghurs and other Turk tribes. Split of the Mongol Empire after 1227. The Golden Horde Khanate in the Northwest, founded by Batu, son of Juchi, in 1243. The Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia, covering East and West Turkestan region, ruled by the second son of Chinggis Khan, Chagatai Khan, in 1225. The Ilkhanate in the southwest, ruled by the horde of uh, uh, Hulagu. The Great Khan in the east, ruled by Kublai Khan in 1264. There are a few pictures I want to mention. On the left is the picture of uh, Genghis Khan, born in 1167 and died in 1227. He was the founder of Mongol Empire, born as Temujin, declared ruler of all peoples lived on the Yurts, and named as Chinggis in 1206. Second one is Kublai Khan, born in 1213 and died in 1294. He is a son of the Tului and the grandson of Chinggis Khan. He was the fifth Khagan of the Mongol Empire and founder of the Yuan Dynasty. On the right hand side, on top, was the statue of Chagatai Khan, who was born in 1182 and died in 1242. He is the second son of Chinggis Khan and ruled the Chagatai Empire, which is a large part of Turkestan. The bottom uh, right is the picture of uh, Tughluq uh, Timur Khan, who was uh, born in 1137 and died in 1360. He was uh, also a ruler of the uh, Chagatai uh, Empire. Here are the uh, Uyghur scripts. Uh, Uyghur scripts was adopted uh, during the Mongol Empire and this script, uh, I believe, is still uh, being used in uh, Mongolia today. Another picture of the Mongol army. As we can see, all Mongol armies were consisted of uh, the northern uh, Mongolian and or uh, Turkic tribes. Here are a couple of uh, historical uh, references that the reader can uh, refer to. Uh, the first book uh, is uh, The Empire of the Steppes, A History of Central Asia by René uh, Grosset. The second one uh, is named Storm Across Asia and talked about Chinggis Khan and the Mongols and the Mongol expansion. Both uh, books, you can um, click on the link and the purchase online. They are actually very cheap. Uh, it's good to own these books. If you are interested.
Now, let's look at the Manchu Empire. Manchu Empire was established in 1644 and lasted until 1911 for 267 years. These are the major events uh, happened during Manchu uh, period. In uh, 1644, Manchu conquered northern China and established Manchu uh, dynasty. In 1676, Hungarian Mongols led by Golden ruled northern part of uh, East Turkestan. Emperor Kangxi's force defeated Golden's army in 1690. Uyghur Kingdom in Turpan signed the treaty with Qing. In 1724, a treaty between Jungaria and Qing was signed after Golden's nephew held uprising against Qing. In 57, Jungarian chief Amursana started an uprising. Qing Emperor Qianlong sent uh, between 100,000 to 200,000 troops to pacify the rebellion and killed about 1 million Jungarian Mongols. In 1759, by taking the advantage of White Mountain and Black Mountain factions, Qing army took control of Kashkaria and Tarim Basin. Qianlong controlled not only East Turkestan, but also Tibet, Mongolia, and Taiwan. Subsequently, Burma and Nepal uh, was also conquered. Here, I want to emphasize the uh, fact that Manchu Empire was established by Manchus instead of Han. During the Manchu Empire's uh, uh, conquer of East Turkestan, there were lots of uh, rebellion uh, and uprisings occurred in that region. Here are the list of events. In 1825, White Mountain Khuja Jahangir started an uprising and declared himself Sultan of Kashkaria. In 1830, Yusuf of Bukhara took a rebellion and controlled Kashkaria for three months. In 1846, seven Khuja revolution lasted for 75 days in Kashkari. In 1857, Walihan Rebellion controlled Kashkari for a few months. From 1865 to 1877, Yaqub Bek Rebellion controlled Kashkari, Uyghur Kingdom, and Tarim Basin. Qing General Zuzung Tang led an army of 200,000 against Yaqub Beg's 40,000 troops and regained Harim Basin with help from Russia, Russian, and British. East Turkestan was renamed New Territory in 1884. Lastly, in 1912, Qing Empire was disintegrated and controlled by various warlords. Here's a map of uh, Ming Dynasty. That's uh, before the establishment of uh, uh, Manchu Empire. For uh, 276 years uh, from the collapse of uh, Mongol Empire to the start of Ming uh, Dynasty, Chinese had uh, absolutely no any influence in Turkestan. Here's the uh, comparison of official Chinese map with Ming uh, territory. The establishment of uh, non-Chinese Manchus, a close kin to Mongols and Turks. The green part here uh, was the Manchu homeland uh, from 1629 to 1644. Chinese territory at that time is at the bottom here, the light uh, green color here. Manchu territory was expanded uh, to current Mongolia in uh, 
1697, invaded uh, Tibet uh, from 1720 to 1724, and uh, expanded to East Turkestan and uh, part of the Central Asia from uh, 1758 to 1760. Turkestan region was mainly administered by local Hans, warlords with assistance from Manchu military forces until 1912. Han population stayed steadily around uh, 250,000 or approximately 3% of the total population. As I mentioned earlier, significant uprisings and the turmoil occurred throughout the region after the Manchu invasion. Uh, in another words, until 1911, there were very little, if any, uh, Han Chinese influence in East Turkestan region. And in this map, you can see uh, the East Turkestan region was correctly named as East Turkestan instead of uh, New Territory. Here's another map of the Manchu Empire, or in Chinese called the Qing uh, Dynasty. Two pictures on the uh, left for King Yakubek, who ruled uh, East Turkestan uh, for 13 years. And uh, on the right is the uh, Emperor Qianlong. Here is a paint uh, depicting Yakubek King uh, signing treaty with the British and the uh, Indians. For those of you who are interested in the history of Manchu uh, in relationship with Central Asia, uh, the book uh, called The Great Game uh, is the uh, one of the best uh, references. This is a map published uh, in Japan, and it clearly marked that East Turkestan, uh, Chinese Tatari, Manchuria, Tibet, and Mongolia as a semi-autonomy distinct from China, which is uh, located uh, in the southern part of Manchu Empire. As you can see here, here is Mongolia, here is Turkestan, here is uh, Tibet, and China is right here. Here is an interesting map uh, I found online. In this map, uh, published by uh, Chinese sources, East Turkestan is named as Jungarian Kingdom, a clear uh, indication of uh, self-governance. And Chinese were forbidden to enter East Turkestan. Chinese were forbidden uh, to uh, settle in East Turkestan. Mongols, including Turks, were forbidden to enter the Manchu territory for animal uh, husbandry. See, this part is uh, marked as the uh, Manchin Empire. And this is the Jungaria, and this is uh, called the uh, Karha Mongol, and this is this part is called the Inner Mongolia. So it's nowadays Inner Mongolia. And there is also this territory is also somehow as marked as the temporary uh, Qing uh, territory. Summary. By this short lecture, hopefully, I have made my point that East Turkestan has never been part of China in Han, Tang, Mongol, and Manchu dynasties. 1. Han dynasty had no historical trace left in East Turkestan. 2. Tang had created very limited influence in East Turkestan. 3. Mongol Empire was established and ruled by ancestors of non-Han, Mongol, Uyghur, Turks. 4. Manchu dynasty was established and ruled 
by non-Han Manchus. In conclusion, over the course of 4,100 years of Chinese history, China has only effectively ruled East Turkestan for about 200 years, excluding the period of communist Chinese occupation since 1949. What has happened in East Turkestan since 1949? And has China been successful in forcing East Turkestan to become a part of China? is another big topic to be seriously discussed. Thank you.